All right, with me it is the one and only Bob Nightingale, baseball writer for USA Today. All right, let's cut to the chase, Bob. You broke the news. The Dodgers are in trade talks with the White Sox about Dylan Cease. Uh, how far along are they? Well, they've been talking for a while, but obviously they're not agreeing because he hasn't been traded. Uh, I think, though, I think Cease will be traded. Too many teams want him. Nobody has any starting pitching. So uh, I would think everybody from Atlanta, uh, be a you know, they need a starting pitcher bad. Obviously the Dodgers. Uh, I can see the Baltimore Orioles swooping in too. It's just, you know, too valuable of a pitcher. And uh, everybody knows that he'll bounce back, you know, to 2022 for him. The fact the White Sox are going down the road of trading cease. What does this say about where, where the White Sox are and what Chris Getz is trying to do? I think realistic, you know, you stay, uh, you can't go for work. They've tried that the last couple of years and uh, it's not there. I mean, that's why they trade Aaron Bummer, you know, for five pieces. So I think the same thing here. You now, you know, like Chris Getz said the other day, you know, everybody's available. They, they got to listen in. And I think they do have to listen in. You can't pretend like, okay, everything's going to be fine. Uh, you know, you could hold on to Cease until the uh, All-Star break. Uh, you know, realistically, you know, they're not going to contend this year. But you'll certainly get more for your uh, money right now if you move them. All right, so what do you think the White Sox can get for Cease? Two years until he's a free agent. You mentioned the Dodgers. They have the sixth best farm system in baseball. What kind of package can the White Sox get in return for Dillon? I think you get a, uh, a a team's, you know, two of their top 10 guys, uh, you know, very valuable guy. Uh, you know, rather have Dylan Cease and a one-year Tyler Glass now and you know, that sort of thing. But no, valuable guy. Uh, you know, he's been healthy. So I think they get a ton for him. And everybody's uh, starving for starting pitching. You know, that's why, you know, you see uh, Yamamoto, how many, how many teams want him. You know, Nola got her $72 million dollars in the Philadelphia Phillies. So they got a very valuable commodity here. And, uh, you know, if you don't think they can contend, you know, why not move them? So how many teams do you think are after them? What's the number, you think, the range? Oh, it's got to be at least uh, a minimum of six to uh, ten teams. Uh, I mean, so many teams want to start in pitching. And uh, if you go, you know, NOLA, you know, you know Motto, uh uh, Blake Snell, you, know, you throw him right there in that class, you know, maybe just a notch below, but right there, particularly having two years of control, I would certainly take him uh, over a lot of the other guys that are out there. Yeah, you looked at the deal that Aaron Nola signed. It's $170 million back to the Phillies. How does that affect what the White Sox can get for Cease, who's going to make around eight or nine million next year? And then you don't know what the year after that, but clearly it's a quote unquote cheaper option than say Aaron Nola, those kind of top of the line free agents. Yeah, it just increases the value. Having a guy like that at a third of the price, mm -hmm. uh, you know, then when he's a uh, arbitration eligible, you know, might jump up, you know, say twice as much, but still a lot less than 24. But yeah, it just increases the value. They got a great valuable trade chip and they can sit around all winter and say, you know, wait for their price. You know, no, no hurry, no rush. Uh, I think they're in a, a great position to really kind of help. Uh, you know, maybe it's not so much a rebuild, but reboot and do it quickly. You think it's a reboot? Why do you think it's a reboot and not a rebuild if you're trading Dylan Cease and company? <laughs> yeah, just because they can say, you know what, we're going to be right there in 2025. Uh, the AL Central is a weak division, like the NL Central. Yeah, you, know, you can uh, bounce back and win that thing you know, right away. But realistically, I think if everything went, went real wrong last year, it's hard to say, okay, we're going to pick up 35 games of standings. You know, that's not going to happen. So I think realistically, they got to say, okay, let's uh, be competitive next year. And then, you know, we'll go, uh, we'll go after in 2025. So it doesn't sound like anything is imminent, right? Where, where do you think things stand right now with the White Sox and their courting of teams or teams courting Dylan Cease? Well, I just think the, uh, you know, the White Sox have put a high price tag on them. So far, the Dodgers have not met them. But remember now, uh, Dodgers just found out they lost Aaron Nola. They were in those sweepstakes. So now this may increase uh, their urgency to acquire them, knowing they don't have uh, Nola. So, okay, 
they need they need pitching help and they got a ton of prospects a lot of great prospects ton of great you know catching uh you know then you know white Sox could use a uh when they're frontline guys and they got you know two or three top minor league catchers all right so percentage that dylan cease gets traded what is the percentage that he's traded this offseason I would say it's got to be 90% before opening day. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know, if you train spring training, that sort of thing. But just too valuable a guy and a thing you can, you know, bounce right back from. Remember now, White Sox lost a decent amount of money last year too. So it's not like they're going to hit the free agent market. So, you know, if you uh, not get the free agent market, you know, you're not going to uh, trade away, you know, prospects and try to go for it. You're going to go this route. And I think, you know, realistically is – the uh you know why can't they be a, a serious contender in 2025 so you were at the gm meetings uh you were around chris gets what do you think his plan is what do you what do you see them doing this offseason besides trading dylan sees just kind of get the uh the roster in order you know get it back to uh, where it should be uh where you have prospects to uh you know to trade uh or or, or keep uh but just kind of uh Get it back on track, you know, the way it was a few years ago and, uh, you know, poised to win. It's the right division. You know, no reason why they can't be, you know, like the Twins who have, uh, you know, been very good over the years. Uh, bounce back like the Cleveland Guardians. So it's a wonderful division. I mean, you win 88, 90 games, you're going to be you're going to be in the playoffs. It doesn't really matter whether you win the division or not. But I think realistically, you know, in the words of Chris Getz, I don't like my team. And I don't think anybody else does either. They, they got to get this thing going right. And you can't just piecemeal together and pretend like everything's going to magically, uh, you know, all the problems will magically disappear overnight. Yeah, what did you think when Chris said that? He was basically saying when he meant that, I think what he meant was, yeah, I got good players on this team, but I don't like the team as it's constructed. What do you think about just his on honesty to say something like that? Well, I would think every you know, passionate White Sox fan will say, I agree with you. Uh, you know, you see all the games, Chuck. It's not like you can say, hey, I love my team. It's like if you said, I love my team, you said, this guy's out of his mind. you got to be realistic here. And I think for a while, there the White Sox weren't saying, okay, we'll get a piece here, a piece there. We'll be right back in. And it hasn't worked. So you can't keep trying the same thing over and over. you got to do it this way. So I, I like the fact he said that because he's being very honest. All right, his first trade was the Aaron Bummer trade. Five players in return from the Braves. What did you think about that trade? I like to trade an awful lot. Uh, I think Bummer wanted out. I think he uh, wanted a change of scenery. Uh, people love going and pitching in Atlanta. I think it's great for him. But to get five pieces like that, all you got to do is have one or two guys work out, and it's great. And I think as Chris gets it in his uh, press conference the next day, Hey, we weren't a left-handed reliever short of you know winning a championship. He's acting right. I, uh, I I I like the move a lot. I really I really did. Okay, so I spoke to you on the podcast before the deadline, and you had predicted that the White Sox would trade six players before the deadline, and you were right. They traded six. <laughs> All right. So how many other players total do you think will be traded this offseason by the White Sox? Already, Aaron Bummer's gone. We won't include T.A., or we can maybe include T.A. because they didn't trade him, but they you know, obviously aren't bringing him back. And then C.S. would be next. What's the number in your mind, or who do you think is going to be following potentially Dylan Cease out the door? You know, I'm, I'm not sure who else. You know, uh, was this, uh, people want a Michael Kopech or not. He doesn't have that same value. Could he have that value in spring training or early in the season? Yeah. So I'm not sure. I would say, you know, just less than a uh, handful of uh, uh, of players for sure, just because there's not a market for them. You know, if there was a market, yeah. Uh, but I'm not sure there's a market for uh, Kopech and that that sort of thing. So, you know, maybe sometime in spring training, early in the year, you know, uh, you know whether it's some of the position players they have. But I think right now, they just don't have those guys to trade. Yeah, he was asked, Chris Getz was asked about the market for Aloy Jimenez. And, you know, he said that, you know, Teams have called about him. Uh, what do you think about his market and the possibility of him getting dealt? Well, there's not that many uh, position players on the market, you know, for uh, offensive bats. So I could see him having some value, not a lot. Uh, I think he'd be more of an all-star break type thing where he's got to put up, you know, better numbers 
for them to get something out of it. It makes no sense to move them if you're not going to get some pieces returned uh, just to save money. So I, I would think you'd probably still be around on opening day. You had said in an article the White Sox were planning on lowering payroll. Do you uh, know what anything more beyond that? Is that just a one-year thing and just kind of retreating for a year and then going uh, back up in 2025? Yeah, I think retreating just, you know, for this year for sure. I mean, you saw the attendance is down. I mean, when the attendance is down, you know, you take a financial hit like that. So I think they said, you know what, we've, we've been spending money. It hasn't gotten us anywhere. Let's try this way and kind of rebuild. And then if there's a piece or two that we can get that will help us uh, contend for the uh, AL Central in 2025, they'll do it. I and mean, they're not, you know, it doesn't make sense to spend $200 million on a, on a pitcher, or, you know, $600 million, $500 million on Otani. It makes no sense. So you might as well uh, retreat for a year and then see what's out there. There's not a magical guy out there, you know, that's going to help the White Sox contend in 2024. Yeah. You look at, you know, Dylan C is potentially getting traded and White Sox fans are like, well, who's going to start for this team next year? Basically, he's their only starter, returning starter that you can rely on. Uh, what's the market like starting pitching wise for a team like the White Sox? They're not going to be the top of the market, but in terms of the middle and lower ends of free agents out there for starting pitching. Yeah, I mean, there's guys, uh, you know, out there like, you know, the St. Louis Cardinals just signed a Lance Lynn, that type mm -hmm. of guy. Uh, a Wade Miley, perfect type of guy, you know, if he doesn't go back to the Brewers or, you know, or, you know, red type, type of uh, situation. So there's enough guys like that, you know, the eight to $10 million guys, uh, you know, they're not giving me the Sonny Gray sweepstakes or the Blake Snell sweepstakes. It's just too rich. and They're just too far away from contention. So I would think more, try to find guys and, uh, you know, try to find guys, six year minor league free agents. I think they're all over that market. You know, trying to find a, a steal here. All right, last thing. Okay, I love when I can get you making a prediction, especially when they're right. Where does Dylan Cease get traded and when? I think it's traded uh, sometime in December. I think before January 1st. Uh, I'll go with the Dodgers, but I could see him at Atlanta. Their, uh, Alexa Topless is very aggressive. And Baltimore could use them. Baltimore's got the top farm system. They got more position players to know what to do with. And it follows their MO. Remember their GM, Mike Elias, is from Houston. And when he was working on Jeff Lunau, what they did was trade away some of their prospects. And they went and got uh, Justin Berlin or got a Garrett Cole. I think Baltimore follows the same blueprint. And a guy like that can lift them over the top. Because, you know, they're good. They're a great team. But they're pitching short. So I think for the White Sox, it'd be great if they could deal, uh, do some deal with the Orioles just because they're so loaded. Dodgers are too, but the Orioles are number one right now. Yeah, and then the Orioles aren't going to spend the big time money, I don't think, for a free agent pitcher. So you get Dylan Cease for two years for the next two seasons when your window is open, right? It, it makes sense for the Orioles to be the team most aggressive for him, right? It does. I mean, uh, they're built to win right now. You don't want to see this window uh, be gone. I mean, the window should be there for, you know, four or five, six years. But they got to have starting pitching. I mean, when the playoffs started, everybody says, well, I don't know how far Baltimore will go because they don't have the pitching. And sure enough, you know, they got swept by the Texas Rangers. So that's why it makes a, a lot of sense for uh, Baltimore. And like I said, Arizona is so aggressive with the Alex and Topless there. The Dodgers, you know, always do things right. And the Dodgers desperately need pitching. When they played Arizona Diamondbacks in the first round of the playoffs, they had no pitching. Uh, you know, Kershaw is out for a while now, too. So they're desperate. You know, they're going to have, uh, you know, Walker Bueller come back. They're not going to have Dustin May for a while. Tony Goslin will come back. But they really need another, you know, top flight starter. Well, we're going to learn a lot about Chris Getz as a negotiator and as a GM uh, if he does trade Dylan Cease and the package that he gets, because we're talking about some very competitive teams, some very win now teams who have players to uh, trade and who the White Sox can get for Cease if they trade him. We're going to learn a lot about the White Sox going forward. And uh, Dylan Cease is a GM. Uh, your thoughts on, on where, how Getz is going about this, and then I'll let you go. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, you know, brand new in the job, everything else. He's got some, uh, you know, veteran guys uh, or in the staff. 
with the uh, Gene Watson. Uh, tell you what, of all their uh, the, the picks, you know, Bannister, people go crazy over uh, Alan Bannister. Uh, he's got a great rep rep reputation. I know Jesse Barfield, or say Josh Barfield, Jesse's son uh, from out here in uh, Phoenix. People love that guy too. So I think the hires they made have been tremendous. And, uh, you know, good coaches too, as far as bring them in to help out, uh, help out that staff. But yeah, we'll see. I mean, I think the old Chris Getz isn't going to just say, hey, I'm making this move. I think he'll do a you know, consensus among his own people and says, what do you think? And uh, it's, a, it's a big winner for the White Sox because if you strike it right, it's like, you know, if you strike it right with the Aaron Bummer trade, you'd be back in no time. Okay. Bob Nightingale from USA Today. Great talking with you, and we'll see what happens with Dylan Cease. Thanks, Chuck.